big pickup in uh, private equity for the capital flows, but not massive. Where are those flows coming and which sectors are they going to? As you just pointed out, we've uh, the Africa region actually enjoyed very, very strong growth in private uh, capital flows through 2007 when we reached the previous peak of around uh, $49 billion. Uh, then we had two fairly slow years during the global economic crisis, but now a recovery back to a projected $53 billion this year. Much of that uh, capital flow is going to Angola, Nigeria, and South Africa, although many other African countries with significant natural resource sectors are enjoying strong capital inflows this year as well. These are countries like Mozambique, Ghana, Liberia, uh, Zambia, Uganda, where oil was recently discovered. How about East Africa, where you're situated? What sorts of flows are going into Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda? Uh, this year we're seeing fairly strong recoveries in capital inflows to both Tanzania and Uganda, with Tanzania expected to have about 3% of GDP coming in new capital flows and Uganda at around 4%. Uh, Uganda, obviously the explanation for the strong growth there is the discovery of oil. In Kenya we have slightly lower flows this year. We're projecting approximately half a percent of GDP for Kenya. Of course, then the World Bank does point out that there have been improved macroeconomic policies uh, across the continent, but uh, not everywhere across the continent. Are investors being discerning about where they are parking their capital? Absolutely. Countries that are managing their economies well are, are disproportionately benefiting from capital inflows. The main reason that capital is coming into Africa now is twofold. First of all, Many, many countries in Africa have exercised prudent economic policies over the last few years. They've addressed their external and internal imbalances. They have reduced inflation. They have kept their exchange rates at competitive levels. They've liberalized trade. They've improved their investment climates and they've made necessary investments in road and energy infrastructure, among other places. As a result of all of these investments, the returns on equity to Africa have also gone much higher than they were in the past. And it's obviously the private investor's interest in a sustained return which is drawing capital into Africa today. To what extent do you factor quantitative easing in the United States to these improved capital inflows with the liquidity that's in the global system at this stage, Johannes? Well, I, if, Many African countries were able, because of their strong macroeconomic performance over the last five years or so, to implement counter-cyclical measures during the global economic crisis. Kenya is a case in point. Uh, the Ministry of Finance over 2008-2009 injected about 1% of GDP additional into the economy and as a result they were able to smooth out the impacts of the, of the global financial crisis and maintain higher levels of employment that w than, than would have obtained otherwise. Obviously the US government is doing everything it can through quantitative easing by the central bank at present uh, and through certain fiscal stimulus to ensure that the impacts of the economic recession in America are also softened and that the people in the economy who would otherwise lose employment are given a chance to manage the, this particular crisis. Of course, as you pointed out, uh, Kenya's share of those capital inflows is pretty small. What can countries like Kenya do to attract bigger inflows from, from overseas? Absolutely critical is ensuring that the investment climate is attractive to foreign investors. So for some countries, it's a matter of staying the course, ensuring that fiscal and monetary policy is on the right track, that inflation remains low, that exchange rates remain competitive, trade policy is liberalized, non-tariff barriers to trade are reduced as much as possible, and finally ensuring that key investments in infrastructure that's important for business, such as roads and energy, continues to expand. Well, you mentioned keeping exchange rates competitive, but of course some of those capital inflows can have undesired effects such as strengthening local currencies and making them uncompetitive such as we, we may see here in South Africa. Uh, how do you balance that out, Johannes? You're absolutely right. Local currencies will tend to appreciate as a result of capital inflows, 
But most countries are able to manage their real exchange rates so that it doesn't strengthen too much under these circumstances. That's certainly been the case in Kenya, where the real exchange rate over the last five or six years has remained quite constant. Tell, tell us about the Africa Action Plan. Of course, that's the World Bank strategy for Africa. How, how can that go to assisting countries such as Kenya to, to grow their economy and to attract foreign investment? Uh, some of the key things that we're focusing on in the World Bank is uh, addressing the huge infrastructure deficit that Africa faces today. Our estimate is that approximately $93 billion a year would need to be spent in sub-Saharan Africa to bring the level of hard infrastructure, roads, energy, water, telecommunications, up to the level of a middle-income country, a level like Mauritius enjoys today. Of that $93 billion, approximately $45 billion is already being spent in Africa, and we estimate that another $17 billion or so could be spent through uh, reallocating resources already available to the sector. But that still leaves a very large infrastructure deficit of over $30 billion, and the World Bank, through its new Africa strategy, will be helping to finance that particular gap. And, and uh, how, how would you go about financing that gap? Well, we work with governments across the continent to uh, identify the key infrastructure constraints that are obtaining within the different economies and the regions in which they are operating. So, for example, in East Africa, it's very clear that there's been a very large underinvestment, particularly in energy generation over the last 10 years. And we're working closely with the governments of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, and Rwanda to exploit energy generation potential in all five of those countries, including in projects that uh, involve more than one country investing in the, same, uh, in, in the same generation plant. In addition, we're financing transmission and distribution lines to ensure that new energy that's generated is able to get out to the factories that need it and also to the uh, small uh, farmers and small business holders and government uh, entities such as health care, health clinics and schools that need it as well.